Convention on Offenses and Certain Other Acts Committed on Board Aircraft, signed at Tokyo on 14 September 1963, in force on 4 December 1969, United Nations, Treaty Series, Volume 704, Number 10106 Depository, International Civil Aviation Organization. The state's parties to this convention have agreed as follows. Chapter 1. Scope of the Convention. Article 1. 1. This convention shall apply in respect of a. Offenses against penal law, b. Acts which, whether or not they are offenses, may or do jeopardize the safety of the aircraft or of persons or property therein or which jeopardize good order and discipline on board. 2. Except as provided in Chapter 3, this convention shall apply in respect of offenses committed or acts done by a person on board any aircraft registered in a contracting state, while that aircraft is in flight or on the surface of the high seas or of any other area outside the territory of any state. 3. For the purposes of this convention, an aircraft is considered to be in flight from the moment when power is applied for the purpose of takeoff until the moment when the landing run ends. 4. This convention shall not apply to aircraft used in military, customs or police services. Article 2. Without prejudice to the provisions of Article 4 and except when the safety of the aircraft or of persons or property on board so requires, no provision of this convention shall be interpreted as authorizing or requiring any action in respect of offenses against penal laws of a political nature or those based on racial or religious discrimination. Chapter 2. Jurisdiction. Article 3. 1. The state of registration of the aircraft is competent to exercise jurisdiction over offenses and acts committed on board. 2. Each contracting state shall take such measures as may be necessary to establish its jurisdiction as the state of registration over offenses committed on board aircraft registered in such state. 3. This convention does not exclude any criminal jurisdiction exercised in accordance with national law. Article 4. A contracting state which is not the state of registration may not interfere with an aircraft in flight in order to exercise its criminal jurisdiction over an offence committed on board except in the following cases. a. The offence has effect on the territory of such state. b. The offence has been committed by or against a national or permanent resident of such state. c. The offence is against the security of such state. d. The offence consists of a breach of any rules or regulations relating to the flight or manoeuvre of aircraft in force in such state. e. The exercise of jurisdiction is necessary to ensure the observance of any obligation of such state under a multilateral international agreement. Chapter 3 Powers of the Aircraft's Commander Article 5, 1 the provisions of this chapter shall not apply to offences and acts committed or about to be committed by a person on board an aircraft in flight in the airspace of the state of registration or over the high seas or any other area outside the territory of any state unless the last point of takeoff or the next point of intended landing is situated in a state other than that of registration, or the aircraft subsequently flies in the airspace of a state other than that of registration with such person still on board. 2. Notwithstanding the provisions of Article 1, Paragraph 3, an aircraft shall for the purposes of this chapter, be considered to be in flight at any time from the moment when all its external doors are closed following embarkation until the moment when any such door is opened for disembarkation. In the case of a forced landing, the provisions of this chapter shall continue to apply with respect to offences and acts committed on board until competent authorities of a state take over the responsibility for the aircraft and for the persons and property on board. Article 6. 1. The aircraft commander may, when he has reasonable grounds to believe that a person has committed, or is about to commit, on board the aircraft, an offence or act contemplated in Article 1, Paragraph 1, impose upon such person reasonable measures including restraint which are necessary. 
a. To protect the safety of the aircraft, or of persons or property therein or b. To maintain good order and discipline on board or c. To enable him to deliver such person to competent authorities or to disembark him in accordance with the provisions of this chapter. 2. The aircraft commander may require or authorize the assistance of other crew members and may request or authorize, but not require, the assistance of passengers to restrain any person whom he is entitled to restrain. Any crew member or passenger may also take reasonable preventive measures without such authorization when he has reasonable grounds to believe that such action is immediately necessary to protect the safety of the aircraft, or of persons or property therein. Article 7. 1. Measures of restraint imposed upon a person in accordance with Article 6 shall not be continued beyond any point at which the aircraft lands unless a. Such point is in the territory of a non-contracting state and its authorities refuse to permit disembarkation of that person or those measures have been imposed in accordance with Article 6, Paragraph 1, c. in order to enable his delivery to competent authorities. b. The aircraft makes a forced landing and the aircraft commander is unable to deliver that person to competent authorities or c. That person agrees to an onward carriage under restraint. 2. The aircraft commander shall as soon as practicable, and if possible before landing in the territory of a state with a person on board who has been placed under restraint in accordance with the provisions of Article 6, notify the authorities of such state of the fact that a person on board is under restraint and of the reasons for such restraint. Article 8. 1. The aircraft commander may, in so far as it is necessary for the purpose of subparagraph A, or, B, of paragraph 1 of Article 6, disembark in the territory of any state in which the aircraft lands any person who he has reasonable grounds to believe has committed, or is about to commit, on board the aircraft an act contemplated in Article 1, paragraph 1, B. 2. The aircraft commander shall report to the authorities of the state in which he disembarks any person pursuant to this article, the fact of, and the reasons for, such disembarkation. Article 9, 1. The aircraft commander may deliver to the competent authorities of any contracting state in the territory of which the aircraft lands any person who he has reasonable grounds to believe has committed on board the aircraft an act which, in his opinion, is a serious offence according to the penal law of the state of registration of the aircraft. 2. The aircraft commander shall as soon as practicable and if possible before landing in the territory of a contracting state with a person on board whom the aircraft commander intends to deliver in accordance with the preceding paragraph, notify the authorities of such state of his intention to deliver such person and the reasons therefore. 3. The aircraft commander shall furnish the authorities to whom any suspected offender is delivered in accordance with the provisions of this article with evidence and information which, under the law of the state of registration of the aircraft, are lawfully in his possession. Article 10. For actions taken in accordance with this convention, neither the aircraft commander, any other member of the crew, any passenger, the owner or operator of the aircraft, nor the person on whose behalf the flight was performed shall be held responsible in any proceeding on AC count of the treatment undergone by the person against whom the actions were taken. Chapter 4. Unlawful Seizure of Aircraft. Article 11, 1. When a person on board has unlawfully committed by force or threat thereof an act of interference, seizure, or other wrongful exercise of control of an aircraft in flight or when such an act is about to be committed, contracting states shall take all appropriate measures to restore control of the aircraft to its lawful commander or to preserve his control of the aircraft. 2. In the cases contemplated in the preceding paragraph, the contracting state in which the aircraft lands shall permit its passengers and crew to continue their journey as soon as practicable and shall return the aircraft and its cargo to the persons lawfully entitled to possession.
Chapter 5. Powers and Duties of States, Article 12. Any contracting state shall allow the commander of an aircraft registered in another contracting state to disembark any person pursuant to Article 8, Paragraph 1. Article 13, 1. Any contracting state shall take delivery of any person whom the aircraft commander delivers pursuant to Article 9, Paragraph 1. 2. Upon being satisfied that the circumstances so warrant, any contracting state shall take custody or other measures to ensure the presence of any person suspected of an act contemplated in Article 11, Paragraph 1 and of any person of whom it has taken delivery. The custody and other measures shall be as provided in the law of that state but may only be continued for such time as is reasonably necessary to enable any criminal or extradition proceedings to be instituted. 3. Any person in custody pursuant to the previous paragraph shall be assisted in communicating immediately with the nearest appropriate representative of the state of which he is a national. 4. Any contracting state, to which a person is delivered pursuant to Article 9, Paragraph 1, or in whose territory an aircraft lands following the commission of an act contemplated in Article 11, Paragraph 1 shall immediately make a preliminary inquiry into the facts. 5. When a state, pursuant to this article, has taken a person into custody, it shall immediately notify the state of registration of the aircraft and the state of nationality of the detained person and, if it considers it advisable, any other interested state of the fact that such person is in custody and of the circumstances which warrant his detention. The state which makes the preliminary inquiry contemplated in paragraph 4 of this article shall promptly report its findings to the said states and shall indicate whether it intends to exercise jurisdiction. Article 14, 1. When any person has been disembarked in accordance with Article 8, paragraph 1, or delivered in accordance with Article 9, paragraph 1 or has disembarked after committing an act contemplated in Article 11, Paragraph 1, and when such person cannot or does not desire to continue his journey and the state of landing refuses to admit him, that state may, if the person in question is not a national or permanent resident of that state, return him to the territory of the state of which he is a national or permanent resident or to the territory of the state in which he began his journey by air. 2. Neither disembarkation, nor delivery, nor the taking of custody or other measures contemplated in Article 13, Paragraph 2, nor return of the person concerned, shall be considered as admission to the territory of the contracting state concerned for the purpose of its law relating to entry or admission of persons and nothing in this convention shall affect the law of a contracting state relating to the expulsion of persons from its territory. Article 15, 1. Without prejudice to Article 14, any person who has been disembarked in accordance with Article 8, Paragraph 1, or delivered in accordance with Article 9, Paragraph 1, or has disembarked after committing an act contemplated in Article 11, Paragraph 1, and who desires to continue his journey shall be at liberty as soon as practicable to proceed to any destination of his choice unless his presence is required by the law of the state of landing for the purpose of extradition or criminal proceedings. 2. Without prejudice to its law as to entry and admission to, an extradition and expulsion from its territory, a contracting state in whose territory a person has been disembarked in accordance with Article 8, Paragraph 1 or delivered in accordance with Article 9, Paragraph 1 or has disembarked and is suspected of having committed an act contemplated in Article 11, Paragraph 1, shall accord to such person treatment which is no less favorable for his protection and security than that accorded to nationals of such contracting state in like circumstances. Chapter 6. Other Provisions, Article 16, 1. Offences committed on aircraft registered in a contracting state shall be treated, for the purpose of extradition, as if they had been committed not only in the place in which they have occurred but also in the territory of the state of registration of the aircraft. 2. 
without prejudice to the provisions of the preceding paragraph, nothing in this convention shall be deemed to create an obligation to grant extradition. Article 17 in taking any measures for investigation or arrest or otherwise exercising jurisdiction in connection with any offence committed on board an aircraft the contracting states shall pay due regard to the safety and other interests of air navigation and shall so act as to avoid unnecessary delay of the aircraft, passengers, crew or cargo. Article 18 if contracting states establish joint air transport operating organizations or international operating agencies, which operate aircraft not registered in any one state those states shall, according to the circumstances of the case, designate the state among them which, for the purposes of this convention, shall be considered as the state of registration and shall give notice thereof to the International Civil Aviation Organization which shall communicate the notice to all states parties to this convention. Chapter 7 Final Clauses, Article 19, until the date on which this convention comes into force in accordance with the provisions of Article 21. It shall remain open for signature on behalf of any state which at that date is a member of the United Nations or of any of the specialized agencies. Article 20, 1. This convention shall be subject to ratification by the signatory states in accordance with their constitutional procedures. 2. The instruments of ratification shall be deposited with the International Civil Aviation Organization. Article 21, 1. As soon as twelve of the signatory states have deposited their instruments of ratification of this convention, it shall come into force between them on the ninetieth day after the date of the deposit of the twelfth instrument of ratification. It shall come into force for each state ratifying thereafter on the ninetieth day after the deposit of its instrument of ratification. 2. As soon as this convention comes into force, it shall be registered with the Secretary-General of the United Nations by the International Civil Aviation Organization. Article 22, 1. This convention shall, after it has come into force, be open for accession by any state member of the United Nations or of any of the specialized agencies. 2. The accession of a state shall be effected by the deposit of an instrument of accession with the International Civil Aviation Organization and shall take effect on the 90th day after the date of such deposit. Article 23, 1. Any contracting state may denounce this convention, by a notification addressed to the International Civil Aviation Organization. 2. Denunciation shall take effect six months after the date of receipt by the International Civil Aviation Organization of the Notification of Denunciation. Article 24, 1. Any dispute between two or more contracting states concerning the interpretation or application of this convention which cannot be settled through negotiation, shall, at the request of one of them, be submitted to arbitration. If within six months from the date of the request for arbitration the parties are unable to agree on the organization of the arbitration, any one of those parties may refer the dispute to the International Court of Justice by request in conformity with the statute of the court. 2. Each state may at the time of signature or ratification of this convention or accession thereto, declare that it does not consider itself bound by the preceding paragraph. The other contracting states shall not be bound by the preceding paragraph with respect to any contracting state having made such a reservation. 3. Any contracting state having made a reservation in accordance with the preceding paragraph may at any time withdraw this reservation by notification to the International Civil Aviation Organization. Article 25 except as provided in Article 24 no reservation may be made to this convention. Article 26. The International Civil Aviation Organization shall give notice to all states members of the United Nations or of any of the specialized agencies. a. Of any signature of this convention and the date thereof. b. Of the deposit of any instrument of ratification or accession and the date thereof. c of the date on which this convention comes into force in accordance with Article 21, 
Paragraph 1. D. Of the receipt of any notification of denunciation and the date thereof and E. Of the receipt of any declaration or notification made under Article 24 and the date thereof in witness whereof the undersigned plenipotentiaries, having been duly authorized, have signed this convention. Done at Tokyo on the 14th day of September, 1963 in three authentic texts drawn up in the English, French and Spanish languages. This convention shall be deposited with the International Civil Aviation Organization with which, in accordance with Article 19, it shall remain open for signature and the said organization shall send certified copies thereof to all states members of the United Nations or of any specialized agency.